RVW Lifers. This is going to be a little bit different today. We're going to be just hanging out with Tommy B in the garage. I'll show you a little bit about what goes on around here. Gary, Matt, Martin, everybody, they're off doing their own thing. So I, I have a big game plan to try to get the red car ready for the October race. So I'll go through a little bit about what I'm trying to accomplish and what I'm trying to get ready for it. Uh, and then show you a couple items here in the garage, just my cars and whatnot. So starting off, we have my wife's car, which is a 1968 Savannah Beige Beetle. We call it the wife's car because we originally got it for her. She drove it about four or five times and then just has never driven it since. And then when I sold my last 63 that was slammed, we call it the chum bucket, uh, that car went away and I just sort of took over this one. But when I took over it, I started doing a bunch of stuff to it. Lowered it a little bit in the front with some CB drop spindles, went with gas burner wheels on it disc brakes up front drums in the back then we took it over to caney creek caney creek boys did a really good job painting it so it turned out really really well when it came back uh, it was too nice for some of the stuff that i had for it so i ended up buying all new everything for it i got new window rubber new interior for the most part all rubber on the outside headlights i have stock bumpers for it I have a new one up in the rack for the front, but I need one for the rear. I'm looking for a good rear one. Uh, I'm rocking the CSP Nerf bars. I did a TS, the top spec badge for the hood, which is pretty cool. I'll show you what that one looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we went with NOS, some German Hellas up front, some H4s, gas burners. The inside's all relatively stock. We have a Hurst shifter in there with an autometer tack. Uh, the autometer tack is painted Savannah beige too. Uh, all new rubber, like I said, looks really good. The main thing that we really stepped up on this one, the current version of this motor is now a fuel injection setup. And really what it does is I've got two lines. Uh, one is a feed and one is a return. Uh, the feed comes in here, uh, comes around, goes to the injectors on um, this fuel rail, goes down, comes around to this side, uh, comes up, goes through, feeds these injectors, comes down, goes up into the regulator. Once it gets to the regulator, the regulator regulates the pressure down. The leftover, everything below 40 PSI right now, dumps back down, comes back over to this side, goes in, and then heads back up front and dumps into the um, in the fuel tank. That setup works really, really well. It's just a continuous feed system, and the re the pressure is really is really good. This is just a uh, 40 millimeter throttle body, uh, so there's no fuel coming from here. The fuel comes from the injectors on this side. I'm running an 019 distributor just because I have a whole bunch of them. Down here, we're running a Oberg oil filter, the A1 Sidewinder muffler, which is down here, a sump, got a coffer bar, and a mid-mount, and some other stuff. I did just step up on the transmission, so it's got a 388 with a uh, Super Beetle main shaft and some other goodies inside of it. Uh, overall, the motor is relatively small but works really well smooth running now with the, the fuel injection i'm not pro a professional at it but i am certainly learning my way through it and it's been pretty awesome so far with that one so the second one is our 1959 a slam fjord blue uh, beetle it's rocking the fuchs uh color match fender beating running boards the three spoke steering wheel this one's got a vintage speed shifter in it and a package tray I did the fuel tank fuel sending unit so that I could see how much gas I have in it. That's always important to me at least because so many times I ran out of fuel, flipped the switch, and then had another gallon. And I was like, ah, oh, I got another gallon. And then I didn't have no gallon. Uh, and that gallon went through pretty quickly and I, I procrastinate way too much. I need something in my face telling me that I'm out of gas. Overall, this car is pretty stock. Still six volts, still rocking a 36 horse in the rear. Um, it does have a Lazaro built LZ beam, four inch narrowed, so it sits down pretty low. It's got disc brakes on it um, with the 5x130 pattern for the Porsche. The rear has got adjustable spring plates. It's got a, a little bit more modern uh, transmission in the back, so it's not a split case. It's out of like a 66 or so. Um, and then the motor's got some stuff done to it, but nothing spectacular. Um, most of it is just that we drive it and it sets low. I do like this car a lot, so I drive it the most, knowing that this car just gets us wherever we need it to go. I can drive it to... Uh, Fredericksburg or drive it wherever. The the beige bug is pretty cool too and I used to drive it every single day. It was my only car so it was my daily driver but now I have a couple other cars to choose from and I don't drive that one near as much as I used to. So what it does is it leads us to the 66. The one I'm trying to get ready for the race. Uh, the main thing with the 66 is that it was driving till last night and I got a little ahead of myself before filming and I just started taking stuff apart.
So now that we have the motor out of the red car and it's on the engine stand, I'll go over a little bit about what's inside of it. But it's a 70 by 94 motor with IDAs, uh, 5.4 H-beam rods, early model CB heads that are 43 by 37 valved, Potter roller rockers, uh, triple spring heads, uh, some JC goodies, MSD. It's got an FK8 cam in it, bird pump, and a stage two pressure plate. Uh, it's been wedge mated, it's balanced. And then I run an A1 Sidewinder on it uh, with the O2 bung and a CSP twist linkage on it. I'm gonna put in a mid mount. It's called a Stiffy. It's from uh, Cool Rides, part of the Mendiola family. Uh, so it's got six points. It's got, um, it goes up to the shock tower as it goes down to the frame horns and then goes to the front of the frame horns. Uh, so I'm gonna be installing that. And then I got some uh, new Coney shocks for it also. This is what's all gonna go in the motor. This is the uh, bar that goes across. These go to the shock mounts. These go into the side of it. Uh, there's two different links here. Uh, obviously one's a little longer, one's shorter. I don't know yet which one's what. So I have to figure that part out um, as I do it. These go up to the front of the frame horns. I bought some stainless nuts and bolts just in case. And then here's my Coney shocks. Today we got our brackets in. The main thing that we had to do was the brackets were shipped or for early model and they're straight and this car being a 66 we needed them to be a little bit different as you can tell they're quite a bit different so i called up cool rides and kevin was super cool about sending me out the right brackets so i'm going to be installing the bracket in there and the angled one and then shipping him back these other ones and i did get uh some coney shocks they're uh they have four adjustments i'm gonna start in the middle because i really don't know which version is going to be the better one just sort of like this uh get the right bracket now the angled angled ones then we get these rods there's two different sizes there's a shorter one and a longer one uh, i believe the shorter one's going to end up being to the to the front of the car uh, and the longer one will be towards the back of the car. So we'll get this in here pretty quickly. So what I did do is I test fitted these just to see how they looked in this piece right here in this heim joint. To get this pin to go in there and give me all the adjustment that I wanted, that I needed. What I'm finding is, is that the point is a little too sharp to meet right in here. So as it goes down in there, it doesn't give me enough room to get that piece in there just right to give me room to play around with. So what I'm doing is I'm calmly just rounding this over a little bit so that when it goes down in there, it gives me a lot more room to be able to get down in there. So this pin is really tight, but I'm gonna round it just a little bit so that I can actually swivel this and get a little bit of play right there. Voila, we love it. So now that we have our bracket rounded over and we're able to put our pin in easy peasy and move it so we can get it into place wherever we want it to be the best we can. The other side is in place sort of just sort of holding it and I always want the pin these type of pins there's a keep that goes in it but I want the pin to be on the downside so if it was to fall off for one it'll be behind here not able to go anywhere two if it was the other side and it did fall off it could actually slide out and the whole thing can come off altogether so for now i think this is the best version of keeping this together then twisting this one's a reverse thread and so as you twist it it gets longer and shorter so right now i'm just sort of loosely putting everything together i'll put the long rod in place I put a rag over the transmission, even though this, uh, the red on here is powder coated, it still can scratch a little bit. <clears throat> so, Alright, so I had to round these edges a little bit too, as you can see, to be able to get it tight enough to get to the pin. I went ahead and rounded this one too. So what I figured out after getting it in there was that it wasn't as easy as we would like it to be, so I didn't take you along for that ride, even though I got it done pretty quickly. So here, I went ahead, put the pin in, and I have the pin on this side for this bracket, but I wanted to make sure that this hole lined up. So to get that closer, I'll turn it 
which draws it closer, draws it into each other, and gets that hole lined up in the bracket into the framework. And I want to do it to where I don't have to put too much effort into it. We're almost there. Uh, we'll put the other support rods to the front of the car. I did have to do a little extra work just to get it to this point, but again, none of it's hard. It's just extra work and making sure that you pay attention and not work and worry about fighting it, but getting it to work for you, like rounding over these edges, made my life a billion times easier. Another thing I got, I picked up some uh, 215, 65, 15 M&Hs, some the DOT versions uh, for the race. Get ready. Um, I went ahead and studded these Type 3 drums that we have on the, on the car. Um, my Coney shocks are in place. The stiffies fully done. A little bit of wiring is left to do. It's all in place. This bracket right here, but I had to cut it out to get it around the brake uh, T. Make sure I could get it there, but the other side didn't have that issue. Um, and then I went with two bolts instead of one bolt that it comes with. Um, so this all is in place. It's all locked down. It's all super nice. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, and then I put the Citrab oil cooler with new lines and everything is back in place. All right, so we got the motor back in. Everything is done. I still have to get the carbs back together. I'm putting in some uh, Berg uh, multi-stepped vents, some 3540 vent Venturis for the IDAs. So I gotta put the uh, plug wires and do some other wiring. But for the most part, we got the stiffy bar in, we got the motor back in, uh, we got some tires mounted, we did pretty much everything we were looking to get done. As the, uh, the guys like to say, uh, if you like what you're seeing, like, subscribe. Uh, always make sure to tell your friends, tell your aunts, Maybe tell your uncles. I think that's how uh, Gary always likes to say, tell your aunts, tell your uncles. Make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any statements to make or any suggestions for me, I'm all ears. I'm always up for learning something. Or if you have any questions, I'm always up for trying to maybe help out also. Uh, I'll do my best. I don't know everything, but I certainly know a couple things here and there uh, that may or may not help, help you out. Let me know. Thanks, sir.